My family has reached the stage in life that often money is the more appreciated gift. The challenge is giving the children a gift to open instead of just an envelope with a check or cash in it. Today's project is the way I solved it this year. The boxes can be wrapped up, put in a gift bag, or just handed to the recipient. I have sealed one end of the box with removable tape so that if the children want to, they can continue to roll up the bills and put them in the box and pull them out. A very simple way that it works, it says pull and that is what you do. And they continue to pull and pull until it is empty of however many bills that you choose to roll up into it. I have joined the bills together with the scotch removable tape, putting a strip of tape on the front side of the bill and the back side of it. Also, I discovered that if you do run the tape totally from edge to edge, you have less catching as it comes through the slot. It is just simple to roll them up, but I've also found that the tighter the roll is when it starts into the box, the more smoothly that it will pull out of the box too. And so I have it rolled like this. I then just take the box, slide it in, poke the end up through the slot, close it, and seal the end. The other end I do have um, glued down so it is firm. It's just the one end that opens that way. Now that Christmas is over and the money boxes have been opened and played with, it is time to finish the construction part of this video and get it posted. I'm hoping even though it's been a month since I filmed the opening section that this isn't too disjointed. I do have to say, the reaction of the kids to their gifts surpassed my hopes. At the end of this, I will show a short clip of one of my great nephews demonstrating his, and some still shots of his sister adding other cash she had received to the roll of bills that were in the box. Most of the time, I start with 12 by 12 paper, but it will work cutting two boxes from 8.5 by 11 paper. It just requires a little more careful fitting of the ends since there is only a quarter of an inch overlap instead of the half inch that you have using the 12 by 12 paper. I will show the dimensions for both sizes, but the assembly I do uses the box cut from the 12 by 12. The finished size of the box is the same regardless of the starting size of the cut piece. So let's get started. From a 12 by 12 paper, cut a piece of paper that is 6 inches by 8 and a half, or using an 8 and a half by 11 sheet of paper, cut it in half so you end up with two pieces that are 5 and a half by 8 and a half. Next thing that you need to do is score along the eight and a half inch sides. And this is the same regardless of whether you are using a six by eight and a half sheet of paper or the five and a half by eight and a half inch sheet of paper. With eight and a half across the top, score at two inches four inches, six inches, and eight inches. Then rotate the paper 90 degrees. Now this is different depending on whether you're using the six inch size of paper or the five and a half inch size of paper. For the six inch size of paper, score at one and a half and four and a half. If you're starting with a five and a half by eight and a half inch sheet of paper, 
you do the same scoring at two inches, four inches, six inches, and again at eight, rotate at 90 degrees. This one though, you score at one and a quarter inches and four and a quarter inches. All right, the next thing that you need to do is crease along the score lines. And from here on, I'm going to be working on the six by eight and a half sheet of paper, but it is the same for the five and a half by eight and a half paper now that you've set all the score lines. All right, you have to crease all of the score lines and this last one then and you have this. What you will now start to do is trim along these score lines so that you can assemble the box. And the way that I like to do it is to cut a thin wedge along the crease line so that the box will fit together more evenly. I do it here, 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 and then on the ends Cut this section out, and this section out, and end up with one sheet of paper that is this. The next thing that I do is decorate the box. I have cut two sheets of paper, two pieces of paper rather, that are one and seven eighths by one and seven eighths, and four pieces of paper that are one and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. What I do now is I take the four sheets of paper and put them here, 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 and here. see how quickly and accurately I can get these glued on so you're not just sitting here watching me. Oops. Now that I have these four pieces of paper adhered, I then cut the slot that the money will slide through. What I have used is a die from the Lawn Fawn uh, slide on over. It is not quite wide enough for a dollar bill to slide through, so what I will do is I will slide it almost to the end on one side, cut it, and then using the cut that's left there as a template, just slide the die over a little bit further so that I can extend the cut wide enough. You can also use an X-Acto knife, other punches that you may have that work, you know, whatever works for you. At this point, you now have the four panels adhered and the slot cut through this one panel. This is the time to confirm that it is actually wide enough for a dollar bill to fit through. Now that this much of it is done, it's time to start assembling the box. Turn it over and on the 
this flap, glue, or use some other strong adhesive. And on one of the end panels, fold in and again using glue or another strong adhesive, seal that down. At this point, you can take one of the one and seven eighths by one and seven eighths pieces and glue it on here. Just solidly get that down and adhered and you are well on your way. Now, the other end, the kids did have a lot of fun playing with it, so this other end, I only used temporary tape on this portion of it. So, you only want to put this panel on this top flap. on and then use some sort of a temporary glue dot or tape or whatever to hold it down. For this one I am just putting some little paper cutouts on the front of it and on each end. The ones that I did at Christmas time I used decorator paper so there wasn't a need to do the rest of this deck, the, the rest of these little pieces on it. Um, also, if you are concerned about the end flap staying there, just use a little piece of temporary tape on it. There, it'll hold it down. What you need to do at this point is take the dollar bills or whatever bills you have and start taping them end to end. And there's no way around it. This is a time consuming portion of it. I just use the Scotch brand temporary tape and tape and then again tape on the other side of it so you have as few loose edges as possible. You roll the bills up stick them through the opening And then you can then put a little tag on top that says pull me or happy birthday or whatever. And it's just a matter of pulling them out and they're done. Okay. I'm Connor. This is a gift for my aunt, Toby.